Hey guys, today I am going to talk about the new Assassin's Creed collection, and yeah, it looks pretty affordable, right? So right now, they're sitting at $50 on Star City Games for the bundle. They have a lot of stock, and the cards look pretty good. There are some interesting new cards, obviously, for EDH. This definitely seems like an EDH play. In my opinion, Assassin's Creed is a very popular video game series. And I think it's good. I think uh, the cards look good. I think they they do serialized numbers, right? So there is a they actually show serialized Leonardo da Vinci, which looks pretty cool. And I overall they have memory corridor corridor frames, which looks you know it's kind of like if you ever played a game, you uh, are a modern character and they're going through your ancestors and so on. And they have followed a creed. So they have the etched the etched foils are back. I, I haven't been a fan of them. I think uh, they don't look that good in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. You might love them. So there's the starter kit, the collector booster, the beyond booster. Okay, so let me read you some of this product. So the starter kit, your assassin training starts here. Gear up for your first game of magic with two Assassin's Creed themed decks. And learn the ropes with the included guide. So absolutely smart. Oh, this is my favorite card. It's uh, <laughs> whenever a card says God on it, it's probably godlike. When you need new players, so I like this set from the standpoint that probably ninety percent of the players will be new. So you have to make a product for them to get into the game. Magic is growing, no matter what people are saying. Magic is expanding. It's just not expanding in the way that I, and some people believe or hope it would. A lot of this new cards and reprints, this has been exactly what they should have been doing the whole time. You know, the reprinting of uh, re Reconnaissance, that's a big one, guys. Uncommon, they didn't rarely upgrade that one. Beautiful card. That's what they should have been doing the whole time, in my opinion. So collector boosters get decked out like a master assassin with collector boosters full of rare shining foils and exclusive special treatments. Every pack contains two foil etched cards. Again, I'm not a fan of that. Beyond boosters, these seven card boosters, so again, they are seven cards only, provide a curated opening experience for fans, including a borderless card. And shiny car foil in every pack. The pass is yours to explore. Then the bundle. Leap into history with a box full of Assassin's Creed themed cards and accessories, including nine Beyond Boosters, a special art, special alt art promo card, and 40 lands and more. So I think overall this set will be pretty popular because the IP is it's releasing July 5th, but the cards are being spoiled right now. The land looks pretty cool when you combine them. Uh, hopefully we have an image of that here. Do I think this is like a card? Do I think this is something that you would want to? And and more and more modern product, you don't really want to, you want to open it and that's it. Um, you don't want to continue to hold it sealed. I don't think these modern products really are sealed. And and you can look at other games, you know, if you reprint it like Yu-Gi-Oh! and so on, the older boxes are not that much more expensive. You just reprint everything of value, and that's where they're going for, which is exactly what they should have done to save the game. So I, I like these cards. You know, I played Assassin's Creed a few different times. I'm actually waiting for the Final Fantasy uh, that would be very interesting, in my opinion. Assassin's Creed, even though I played the game, I enjoyed the game, I, I'm not like a fan of the lore. Um, I, don't, I haven't played multiple of the games. I actually have a figure of, uh, I think his name is Kennedy. And uh, it's a US one, so it came in like a special edition. And it's a really nice figure. I just never got really like too much into the lore of the game. It's just kind of a fun game to play. But for a Final Fantasy or something like that, yeah. They're, what they're doing is very smart here. Um, they don't need to reinvent the wheel. People like these IPs. And one of Magic the Gathering's biggest weaknesses, it's his own IP is pretty pretty bad, guys. Uh, Magic's own IP is, I would say, one of the worst IPs across all card games. And that's saying a lot because they've been around the longest. You look at Pokemon, they got 
in anime every season. They have movies. Uh, they have obviously the video games. That's kind of big, right? They got Pokemon Go. I don't really know what Magic has. Uh, they were supposed to have a movie and a Netflix, but it never happened. So I'm, I think overall Magic is kind of uh, needing that this IP boost. And what better way, right, to do this than just not even make your own IP? Their own, when they were doing their own IP, it was pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. You know, who the hell knows who Jace is and like who knows all, any of this stuff? Um, I don't, you know, I don't follow. Like, and I think in the post Reddit, it was like someone's like, hey, where's Garou, guys? No one cares. No one cares, guys. No one knows where he is or what he's been doing this entire time, right? And uh, the the lore is just so bad in Magic, so why not just take other lores like Final Fantasy like this, right? Uh, and just kind of ride it to the moon, because I do feel like this is a very smart thing to do. And why I feel like it's so smart is because when you think about IPs, Final Fantasy has done a really good job. Assassin's Creed Fallout was huge. Now, do I feel like this will be as big as Fallout? No, because I think Fallout is a bigger game. I don't know if that's true or not, but for me it was. And Fallout had an Amazon TV show, which released at the same time. So the number one seller of Fallout, was also, which is Amazon, was also released their own TV show, which was really, really good. My girlfriend and I, we enjoyed it immensely, right? The TV show was fantastic. Uh, now, will Assassin's Creed have a TV show in the future? I don't know. It, it should. It definitely, if Fallout was so successful, I don't see why Amazon can't do Assassin's Creed. So maybe they have a movie. I just don't know. I'm just not a huge Assassin's Creed fan. But I like the cards. I'll probably pick up some for EDH. There's that Excalibur sword. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty interesting card, to be honest. Some of the artifacts, you know, artifacts are interesting in EDH because you can put them in any deck. So technically speaking, um, artifacts are probably some of the most thought you know, most desirable cards in this set, right? And it looks good. You know, the Staff of Eden, Vault's Key. Pretty cool. If I had to summarize this, you know, without giving... Well, I, I guess I had to spoil it. It's um, some dude has, like, a bunch of ancestors who have done really cool stuff and have been assassins, but he doesn't really know. And they put him in, like, some type of machine, and then he travels in his mind, and he kind of relives their events from his ancestors. And they're trying to figure out where the, his ancestors hid something. So they're, you know, going from place to place to place, right? Um, and this is Assassin's Creed. And, you know, the trailers are really good. Um, so they kind of give you an idea what the storyline is about. But I didn't really get into the lore. I don't know why. Like Fallout, I was much more into the lore. I would read, read the, like, wiki pages. Uh, this one, not so much. But overall, it's a fantastic looking set. Um, I think it's going to do really, really, I don't know. Um, it's very weird because it, it, Fallout did have that TV series that was huge. Anyway, let me know what you guys think and how well do you think this will do in the market. My guys, are you guys going to buy it?